Our next speaker, Dr. Yugandar, um, who is a medical doctor, um, but he's trained as a general surgeon in the conventional system of medicine, um, but advocates the efficacy of inner transformation as a major healing tool. Uh, he has dedicated his life for the awakening of human consciousness, he says, and um, he discovered it early in his own childhood without the help of any teacher or guru. Um, and he's very passionate about studying various spiritual schools of thought, ancient and modern, across the world, uh, and uh, extensively studying the healing arts, scriptures, metaphysics, uh, to get connected to the wise, physical and non-physical, um, and relate knowledge to spirituality. And he's the initiator of um, you know, various initiatives, such as the World Parliament on Spirituality, the Nation-Wise wise, Global Transformation Festivals, We Are One Summits, etc. So, uh, Dr. Yugandhar, over to you. Yeah. So, it's close to say good afternoon, but thanks the organizers, Venerable Lama Burum Dupum Tulku, who was my guest one and a half decades back in Hyderabad. And uh, the panelists, Eshi Londa, Pempa Durji, the moderator Maya, Sridhar, and uh, Brother Mesh, my co panelists, and each one of you here, the technical team, everyone. The topic of my presentation has been chosen as Neti, Neti, Charaiveti. This appears to be a little off the track, but it has a deeper roots. I'm going to present not in terms of how we classify, categorize and differ with various types of philosophies and schools of thought. Maybe Ajita, Charvaka, Agnana, whatever schools of thought, the various types of ceramic schools of thought. Though I may compare, but yet my point of view is how to synthesize everything. Because substance is all the same, truth can never be changed. The only Think that differs is style, never the substance. The truth and substance can nev never change. We argue, debate for only styles of presentation or expressions of thought, but never the essence. So once upon a time, when the religions have not arrived at on this planet, there was an ancient civilization which was everywhere, and all the existing civilizations what that we know as civilizations, be it Indus Valley or Mesopotamian or Egyptian or Roman or any type of civilization is all one civilization wherein unity consciousness was the prevailing theme and subject. When the religions came, it divided people. Before religions came, everything was unified. The whole concept, the whole theory, the whole practices were all unified. Religions have divided and make people think differently. And again, the present time has come when the classification, categorizations and ramifications of different schools of thought has reached so much that the, all the types of differences and confusions need to be synergized, need to be synthesized once again to create an altogether everlasting total understanding of human thinking and human consciousness. So from this point of view, I would like to say that yesterday, you know, I was talking with my dear friend, Sri A.K. Merchant Sahib, who was talking about the Mormons, the Mormons of Utah. Today, let me take a, a minute to speak about that, sir. Mormons, you know, they all came from India. The Marma, the experts of Marma Vidya, they all came from India and they went to this place called Utah, which is called as Uttishta in ancient Vedic period. So, the American continents are just downside of India and the masters of those times, prehistorical times, they all spread out and created civilizations everywhere. So India has been the cradle of civilization and all the civilizations which we know as different are all same but, yet, but only branches of the same root called as the Vedic civilization. 
this vritishta has been turned into yuta the mor the marma has been turned into mormons the very discipline we are still existing in the rockies of the continent uh, country called usa so whatever it may be neti means this is not that neti neti means this is not that so how we can arrive to truth from various types of perspectives various types of concepts postulates and perceptions there is a point here sri jagnavalka in brahmaranika upanishad for the first time used the word neti neti that means the process of arriving the truth the process is the deduction principle the process is elimination principle the reductionistic principle by way of observation what we call as pratyaksha pratyaksha is a continuous constant uninterrupted observation of things so that what needs to be eliminated or dropped will drop down so that we reach the essence otherwise called as anumana or inference so the key point is here neti or pratyaksha what dignaga says is apoha apoha is nothing but the neti part of sanskrit so gautama the buddha who used pali as a language of communication deliberately because the language of erudites was sanskrit those days 2000 years back so he wanted to take the essence of entire knowledge into prakrit languages so the prakrit languages of magadha period was pali so he wanted to speak only in pali and most of the knowledge in vedas has been translated or transliterated into pali and what has been said by different disciples the buddhist councils of buddhism and thereafter and even the speeches of gautama the buddha were all expressed in the vedic heritage so what is called as anapana smriti is called as anapana sati so if you observe the eight step process of anapana smriti let me share with you how dignaga entered into a certain perspective or premise of anapana smriti process and took over and a total different type of thinking and philosophy has been emerged so anapana smriti smriti means memory what is smriti is pali sati awareness so they are interchangeable words which is which means both awareness and memory this has got eight step process but grossly speaking it has something called as anugama where breath has been observed without any uninterruptedness breath is observed as only breath then the breath is observed as energy the breath energy is called as upalakshana when breath energy is constantly observed it turns into breath consciousness which is called a vivarta so once the psyche turns into or identifies itself into the state of consciousness it goes into something called as kushala mula kushala mula means the root of this chain of thoughts the root of the patterns and uh, different types of tracks of thoughts so when you go into the different types of tracks of thoughts everything is infinite the mind is full of so many types of thoughts that we don't know what is the root of this thought or primordial thought or prime thought there the philosophy of dignaga enters by way of constant observation the constant observation is not possible by way of only the superficial part of the consciousness otherwise called as mind mind is nothing but only the peripheralized consciousness the converged mind is called as the soul or soul consciousness so we need a type of consciousness called soul consciousness or soulfulness to understand to observe to watch anything as which is observed as pratyaksha so normal state of wakeful consciousness is definitely not enough to observe all these things a type of consciousness a different type of consciousness is certainly required where you are in a complete neutral state unprejudiced unbiased state of consciousness which is a a basic state which is required for observing all the things so that step is called as kushala mula at this point of kushala mula the entire philosophy of dignaga starts so before he is known as the master of logic and reasoning he is actually a master of consciousness he has the master of he has mastered the state of consciousness so let me later share with you what is this consciousness about and how it has been described in vedas so dignaga's philosophy of pratyaksha and anumana the observation the observation is again not percept perceptual it is not even conceptual so the word concept came from the word conceive so it is all kalpana that is what we built around certain premises is called as the kalpana so this kalpana has to be eliminated narrowed down and deducted and should come into the essence 
So the five, 99 percent of the effort, whole effort is basically the pratyaksha or uninterrupted watchfulness that is required. Only one percent is inference, and that inference is carefully drafted. It has to be carefully drafted because 99 percent of the efforts should lead and narrow down to the essence called as the inference or anumana. This anumana is again he classifies into two categories: one which is meant for oneself, but one which is meant for others. Swartha anumana and prarth anumana. So, one if you are convinced for yourself based upon your own efforts and observation and watchfulness, that is not enough. You have to tell the people who are also observing. So that is the most difficult part. So when you try to explain things, difference of opinions step in. Because of the element of convincing others or discussing with others, debating others, making them understand the way you have understood, different schools of thought already emerged. So based upon the Uh, second part of inference or second part of anumana called as prarth anumana. Different schools of thought based upon the way we come down to inference has been different. So I will also explain how who are the followers of uh, Dignaga and who are the opponents of Dignaga. Let me compare a little bit before I actually synthesize everything from the perspective of Neti Neti and Charai Veti. The word Charai Veti is a word which has been used by Gautama Buddha. At the end of each and every sermon, each and every talk that he spoke after getting enlightenment, at the end of every talk, he used to the finishing words were charai veti, charai veti. Charai veti means what? Chara means that which moves. Eva means alone. Iti means thus. So charai veti means simply speaking, keep moving continuously, do not stop it. In Vedas, charai veti, the word charai veti is not a Pali word but a Sanskrit word basically, which means that. Everything has to be under movement, a movement emerging from stillness, not just movement. A movement emerging from stillness. So in Vedas, it is described as Charan by Madhu Vindati, Charan by Madhu Vindati, Charanastha Vadu Mudambaram, Surya Sya Pasya Srimanam Yona Tandraite Charan Charayvedi Charayvedi. That means the way honey bees go to each and every flower and. Collect the nectar and turns into honey. The way the birds go from plant to plant and pollinate, the way sun moves around as solar system, the way the planets move around the sun, everything is in movement. It is a movement which causes the energy. It is a movement that makes you progress. Here, Charai Vethi, Charai Vethi. The words expressed by Gautama the Buddha is not about the linear movement of the uh, three-dimensional world, but the movement within. It is a spiral. The progress or evolution of any consciousness is not really linear, but non-linear in terms of the spiral. So, the more we observe the thoughts and patterns of the mind, the more the more we move within, within, within in circles, like removing the peels of onion. So, the outer layers of this onion are removed in layer by layer, so that we reach the central state of consciousness, the seed consciousness, which is called as bija in Vedas. So, in Shiva Shiva Sutras also. Shiva says it is called as bija vadana. Avadana means contemplation. The contemplation of the seed consciousness is the essence of the entire evolution of a human being. So Charai Vethi, what Gautama Buddha said is, it is movement from outer layer to inner layer, inner layer, reaching the core. That core has been described as the Hiranya Garbha in Himalayas. It is also called as the Hara in Japanese language. Just now I came to know from Lama Pempo Doji. He told the Tibetan word. It is called as Zadud, that is the center of the nadis, so which is located in the belly just below the umbilicus. So there is a place where, the, like we say in Hindu uh, Puranas and all, the Padmanabha. Padmanabha means the uh, deity called as Vishnu. He sleeps on the serpent throne, and from his nabi emerges the lotus, and on the top of lotus, Brahma sits. So the consciousness or Brahma or creation or creativity emerges from this umbilical point, which converges, which is the seat of the soul, which is the seat of all the truth and essence. So deriving from the head consciousness, moving towards heart consciousness, and finally culminating into soul consciousness is the essence of the teachings of Gautama the Buddha, simply called as Charai Vethi Charai Vethi. So coming uh, more into the Dignaga's uh, philosophy. 
he also uses the you no know, yesterday professor but was also talking about the trirupa the paksha sadhyan linga you no know, the uh, the inference part the mark of the inferences part everything we, we did not say all these things dignaga also used the word hetu chakra hetu chakra means the chakra of reason the science of reason so and the followers of uh, dignaga who carried the same philosophy are you no know, those people whom we already know like chandra kirti dharma kirti there are also some other people bhava viveka gnana garbha shanta rakshita chaba sakya pandita nagarjuna these are all the people who followed the same dignaga's philosophy however there were some different opinions because of the sanskrit language language is cause lot of confusion because the word language came from latin langer which means laziness human beings are so lazy that we are not able to use our own telepathic abilities we have created something called as language 5000 languages in the world just because we are not behaving like an ant behaving like an elephant they all communicate with each other with telepathy just because we are lazy not using our inherent ability of telepathy we have created so many types of sounds called as languages and all types of confusions are created language has created all confusions and now all the languages need to be converged into the essence part of it so based upon this languages problem so many uh, different theories have come into existence like udyodkara of nyaya school and kumarela batta kumarela batta has been known as the reincarnated yukta ishwar giri the kriya yogi who is a disciple of lahir mahashay so kumarela batta has been claimed you know uh, believed as the uh, uh, yukta ishwar giri essence of consciousness and mallavadin style of uh, school of thought from jains and uh, prashanta pada from vaisheshika school and other schools of thought like sankhya yoga and vedanta of shankaracharya or dvaita or madhavacharya vishishta dvaita or ramanujacharya all these schools of thought have been uh, you no know, opposing the philosophy of dignaga only by way of style but never by substance for me everything has been same and only one not different but all the expressions have become made different just because of these languages and expressions of words so if you observe the uh, comparative study of uh, the sanskrit schools of thought and the pali schools of thought only because no sanskrit and pali are only two different languages but the essence has been seen if you see the dignada dignaga's philosophy of two step process like pratyaksha and anumana in uh, vedas it is called as vedanga vedanga has got six steps the first step is shiksha shiksha means the pronunciation of the words you no know, the way a mantra has to be pronounced chandas vyakarana nirukta kalpa and jyotish these are the six uh, steps which we are called as vedanga the basis of which has become the essence of the philosophy of all these vedic schools of that and apart from that the pratyaksha uh, pratyaksha of uh, uh, dignaga has been observed as a six step process instead of two steps of dignaga so for vedic schools of thought it is the pramana that is important not the pratyaksha pramana means the prama through the subject and pramaya the object has to become one to understand the essence of anything so the subject part of pramana and the object part of pramana need to become one so the clarity will totally come into existence then the indian schools of thought the six step process of observation has been described as the pratyaksha again of dignaga the anumana again of dignaga the shabda the testimony is very very important here and upamana example or syllogism is very important because if you argue with some people you have to always give examples that so many examples mr sridhar has given mr but has given these type of examples are required to explain things so apart from pratyaksha anumana shabda upamana arthapatti arthapatti means circumstances are also important the collaboration collaborations are also very important collaborative evidence are very important and anupalabdhi that is there is a there is there are some issues and problems of consciousness which can never be understood as per the vedic school of thought that we call it as, they call it as anupalabdhi so unknowable part of oneself unknowable unknowable part of consciousness has also been described unlike the philosophy of dignaga so when it comes to consciousness so from which state of consciousness we have to understand all these things 
in mandukya upanishad in mandukya upanishad which has been promulgated by adi shankaracharya with the guidance of his teacher's teacher govinda pada his teacher name is gauda pada gauda pada teacher was called as govinda pada so govinda pada and adi shankaracharya together have to, have taken lot of time in in uh, drafting drafting the explanation of consciousness so they used only 18 words to describe the consciousness they said time is constant is there so i will make it short adrushtam that which cannot be seen avyavaharam that cannot be explained achintyam that cannot be understood conceptually avyapadesham it does not have any rupa and nama achintyam that cannot be understood by just thinking these are all the names given to the conscious what what doesn't work to understand consciousness or adrishtam avyavaharam achintyam agrahyam alakshanam it doesn't have any properties avyapadesham and it has to be understood as ekatma pratyasaram ekatma means all the three states of consciousness that we know as wakeful the sleep and the swapna consciousness dream consciousness this has this three has to become need to become one so ekatma pratyasaram the essence of these three consciousness levels need to become one satyam this is the truth ultimate shivam this is the most joyous part of one's consciousness advaitam there is no second thing this is only one and chaturtham anyante what we call as turiya consciousness is not a different type of consciousness but amalgam of these three states of consciousness called as the wakeful the sleep and the dream consciousness savigna satmaya so the state of consciousness which is which is required to understand the philosophy of dignaga or any other uh, premises and thoughts or you know uh, dr marchand was saying if so many informations is going on in the world how to understand things uh, it is not the bits and pieces of information that is required but unison of the bits and pieces of the our own consciousness that is required so we need to move from uniting not the information but unit the, uniting the bits and pieces of our own fragmented and fractured types of our consciousness so the consciousness is already united we need to actually make it one when it becomes one the capability to understand things the capability to reduce things the capability to deduct things from different things to only one is possible as per dignaga so it is finally the soulful state of consciousness that is very much required which is otherwise called as kushala mula of gautam buddha the charayavati aspects of gautam buddha which is most essential to understand things and understand the essence of life thank you very much um so um you know we were hoping for more of a dialogue between medical science and philosophy um are there any questions um that anyone has um yes professor pempatorji uh, well i think we should st- start with the philosophers responding to the scientists uh, yeah okay uh thank you very much uh, uh yoginder ji uh, i just want to uh just clarify one thing what you have talked about the word like uh charity charity so yeah in uh, in our translation a tibetan translation there are a lot of you know, used like a uh, bhikshu charity into tibetan translation it's like gelonta uh, chavarchao so it doesn't mean doesn't mean that just move but it says that you have to practice that what buddha says so in our translation in our tibetan translation we have these kind of words but uh, it's just uh, and from the shabdic point of view we can say that jarati or maybe you can move or movement or something like that but uh, here we have this uh, translation and uh, one more thing that uh, uh, you i think if if i'm not wrong i if i uh, heard uh, you saying that anubhavdhi in a dignagas there is no anubhavdhi i think you said yeah. that but no, there no, is it is not dignagas but it is a comparative in, study of dignaga anubhavdhi yeah anyway in the, in the buddhist uh, logic there are a lot of discussion, descriptions uh, descriptions on the anubhavdhi like uh, what we call nangroma mingpa minangwa mingpa right kishila 
so something like that, which is it cannot be uh, under bloody, even though it can be seen, but it is not right there, so you cannot see that. And uh, there is something says that uh, it cannot be seen, it is not there. Like there is two, but I don't know whether I am very clear in explanation of that right now, because of my <coughs> vital English. <laughs> So, uh, this is one, uh, just two things I want to clarify here. Thank you so much. Yeah, Chennai Vaiti, the, the way I told already, it is uh, not really movement, but movement emerging from stillness. It is like meditation motion. It is not just silence, but stillness emerging into movement. The sun appears as still, but the entire solar system is moving at a speed of 250 meters per second. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will need to have a separate seminar for clarifying the uh, doctrinal differences between the Vedic and the Buddhists, which seem to be collapsed in your presentation. Um, you know, for instance, soulful would be a very problematic term for most Buddhists, which you used rather yeah, casually. Anatma, because as yeah. is anatma, it's so yeah. anatma. So we really need to, you know, these are terms which need to be used extremely carefully, and I think we need more time uh, than we have to go into that. Mr. Merchant seems yeah. to have an urgent question. Yeah, well, actually, about the language, uh, I was very intrigued by your remarks, because it is the language that has helped the human race to preserve and to carry forward his heritage. So we have a debate, we will continue over lunch perhaps. I don't want to take more of your time. And the second point is, when you talked about fragmentation of mind or fragmentation of reality, perhaps some of you must have heard of the works of David Baum. You know, he says one of the crises that humanity is facing is the fragmentation of our thought. Our whole thinking process is so fragmented and as a result, we are in a state of conflict all the time. So just uh, briefly, I wanted to yeah. mention... See, uh, I, I differ with his, his uh, words. Uh, it is actually not fragmentation of thoughts, but fragmentation of consciousness. consciousness so, <laughs> instead of confusion, we create fusion. So when it is fragmented, it, is, it turns into confusion. When it is synthesized, it turns into fusion. So confusion to fusion is our idea, in essence. 